So we're going to do a complete flush and fill on an existing solar thermal system um, using propylene glycol and distilled water and acetic acid, otherwise known as vinegar. So we get some distilled water from the local grocery store, more distilled water, and we should have vinegar floating around somewhere in this. White vinegar, I think I already showed that. And then we have two five gallon pails of Cryotech 100, 100% propylene glycol antifreeze, and we will be mixing that down to 50% mix. So we're going to take the cover off and get this ready for filling. Simply remove the return temperature valve. And then we are going to connect things in a certain order in order to get that done. But before we do that, we have to turn off the filter so that it is not operating and isolate the filter as well so that we can get our supply in and our return out with our pumping equipment. In order to set up before we get going, you want to make sure you have enough buckets. You're going to need a staging bucket because the pump needs to be higher. In the ground, you also need a few dump buckets and fill buckets, and yeah, you could use a chair. We could use a chair if we want. Um, and then we have our brand new equipment over there. Start. We're going to start hooking up our hoses. We're going to use this as our first dump bucket, and we are going to connect the discharge of the entire system to the output side. Make sure that the uh, valve is shut off. So you're not leaking anything yet. So looking at our pump, you can see this is our discharge line right here. So this is actually what we're going to use to fill the system. So this is going to be connected into this port on the top, which is our fill port. And we're filling up our reservoir with distilled vinegar. Our pump needs to be primed. I'm going to show you a quick, easy way of doing that. Basically, after everything is hooked up, you can release a little bit of fluid through here, and it will prime the pump. Just did that so you can see it actually happen, but you'd keep this cap on here so that it just flows back out the front. And then we know it's primed. Put that cap back on. Turn it on for a second. Okay. Oh, it's going back into there. Yep. We're going to suck it out. Yeah, oh. it's going to clean it. So for this part, we are about ready. Hold on a second. We're going to turn off the pump, and then we're going to isolate this. So in order to turn the pump off on this SOM 7 controller, we hold the right button until it continues to move. And we go into, in this particular um, controller, we have to go to HND1, switch it from auto to off, and that stops this pump. When you do that, now we can actually turn it off. If you don't do that first, you'll end up burning out the pump. So let's make sure we do that. Turn this one off. Yep. Right. So turn that to the right. 90 degrees. Good. And, and then we're going to get the wrench yeah. on that. Where's the wrench, Jordan? Get the wrench there. Go on. It's not really hard to turn, it's just cumbersome yeah. with all the things in the way. Okay, so that's turned. Now we've got the pump isolated and we can actually begin draining and filling. So we'll start to release a little bit out of here. Watch the backsplash. Okay. And then we'll turn our pump on and we'll begin filling. Oh, we got to plug our pump in. Plug the pump in. We got the pump turned on. It's sucking. Now we'll release this. And we'll actually start pulling the vinegar out and sending it through. So we're going to watch both the empty bucket and the fill bucket to make sure that we have enough liquid coming in and that we're not going to overflow on the way out. So we really got to pay attention here and monitor our nozzles. So now this one is just about full. We're going to get another discharge bucket. It will also allow us to see when the clear liquid comes through before we uh, end up putting that in. We carefully moved our hose to a new bucket. 
We're going to discharge some more. We're going to uh, again start siphoning in or pumping in the new clear distilled vinegar. This system uses about 10 gallons of fluid completely. Another changeover. Hoping it starts to come out clear soon. Yeah. All right, so the vinegar is coming out. So now it's doing its cleaning action. Okay, so we got 10 gallons of vinegar in the system. It's still coming out dark. It has not come out with any of the vinegar yet. Uh, we would smell that. So we're just going to top it off with some regular water to push through um, for the cleaning part of this process. Okay, the fluid is coming out clear and we can smell the vinegar in it. So it's made it through the entire system. We're going to put a little bit of fresh water in, but yeah, we're going to cycle it just here so we can do the cleaning. We're just going to recirculate the vinegar around and around. So I'm going to discharge into here. And then once that gets... Whoa! That stinks. Oh my gosh. <laughs> And we'll get this. Yeah, we'll get this cooking. So now we're just going to clean the system and descale it. Let this operation run for several minutes. If there are any switches that need to be changed, we will do those as well, so that we can make sure that. The glycol runs through its entire system. We've got a heat dump over here, so we're going to run it through that as well. Huh? That one actually is on the, the fresh water side. Okay, so we've let this run for quite some time. We've circulated it through the different diverter valves, made sure all the pipes have been descaled and cleaned. Uh, the water is coming out very clean at this point um, and we are going to switch over to getting ready to fill it with the working fluid, the propylene glycol and the distilled water. First thing we're going to do is clean the pipes out. We're just going to run some regular water through that first to get the vinegar out. So at this point we're going to get rid of the vinegar that's sitting inside the system and we're just going to purge it out with fresh water. So we're just going to release this. and we will refill with the water. We'll just do this until these buckets are emptied and then we know that the vinegar has been purged from the system and then we'll actually start the process of filling it with the working fluid and the distilled water that will sit in the system and pressurize it. So we're getting all the crud out, everything that's left in there. Okay, so the discharge water is finally clear. We're going to get ready to start filling it with working fluid. So we're going to get ready to fill this with the new 100%. The way we mix it is we mix it in equal parts as it flows through the system. So it will start out clear when we see the red come through, then we know we've gotten our part through. And we'll drain this five gallon pail, then fill it with five gallons of distilled water and wait to see when it comes out. So we're just filling, it's sucking from the glycol and still discharging the fresh water that's in there. So we got five gallons added, now we're going to add five gallons of distilled water into the same bucket in that order. So now we're putting the distilled water in and dumping it out again until we see red. Okay, so we're almost at the bottom of 10 fresh gallons. We still don't see any red coming back out. And it just... Now we are just mixing the 50-50 mix of propylene glycol and distilled water, letting it circulate normally throughout the system and getting out any micro bubbles. Burp the system now. I'm going to close the discharge line, let the pressure build up as high as it will go, and then I'm going to release that pressure quickly. And if there's any built up air bubbles in the lines, they will find their way out rapidly. Probably not going to be any in this because we spent so much time already 
filling it. At this point, we have no more air bubbles in the system. We are going to shut the charging down, make sure it's pressurized where we need it to be, which it is currently, and then we'll clean out the pump. Yep, last thing we're going to do is turn everything back in operational mode. So that ball valve, this ball valve, and then also set the handlers 